Hello and welcome to Basement Fodder, the only show whose host is currently not wearing pants. I'm Todd and joined via Skype for the first time ever are my two partners in crime for the evening. That's right, I have two co-hosts, not just one like normal, and they're oddly enough not in the basement of doom, although they are here in spirit. I have the mistresses of mayhem and chaos, Crystal O'Rourke and Michelle Joy Gallagher. Ladies. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. Oh, no, I'm happy to do it. Uh, Dave is off uh, doing his Dystopia Rising LARP this weekend, so uh, he does not have the ability to uh, Skype and or be here, so <laughs> I don't think they would uh, allow... Go I don't think they would allow Skyping in the post-apocalyptic LARP that he's doing, so... <laughs> oh, they would probably frown upon that. So, some people think that goes against their rules. <laughs> it may. It may. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not clear on that, but it may. <laughs> but I'm really happy to have you guys on the show. Um, I haven't really... Um, well, Crystal, you and I have had uh, quite a few com- conversations on the phone, and Michelle, you and I have talked a few times, but uh, it's cool to have both of you guys at the same time. <laughs> I'm always happy to have two girls at once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're happy. Now you guys are responsible for two uh, big sort of like popping groups on Facebook right now. Um, you guys are responsible for starting the uh, the Friends of Dirk Manning group, which I'd, I'd love to hear about that too. And then also you guys have your own group, Mayhem and Chaos, which is gaining a lot of traction too. Um, what brought on the starting of the Dirk group? Oh God! Um, okay, <laughs> that was the night. The night. The night. I Crystal and I. <laughs> go, Crystal. Okay. All right. Um. Well, Michelle and I actually were on a thread of Dirks. I don't remember which one. I do remember the date, though. It was December eighth. We were going back and forth, you know, picking on Dirk, talking about him, and then we were saying, oh, yeah, you know, we should start a fan group for him, and we went back and forth, and first, the first name was Mr. Reeves Dolls, Dolls standing for Dirk's Obsessed Lacrimose Ladies, <laughs> and the group started, Michelle, Michelle started the group on Facebook, and then I made this stupid fan art for it, and then... What did we start with that night? Maybe five or six members? Maybe. And Dirk it was, got yeah. two o'clock in the morning or so, and we were up until 5 a.m. going back and forth discussing how we were going to do this. And now, Michelle, how many members does the group have? Um, the last time I checked, it was up to, I believe it was 358 I believe that is amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's quite an accomplishment. It, um, it is. It really is. And a lot of, and you know a lot of that dirt. You know oh, he yeah. has such a mass following. People, you know, people follow that man anywhere he goes. Yes, <laughs> yes everybody loves Dirk Manning. We know. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. But Michelle has really brought that group together i kind of dropped out of it own thing but it was really michelle that you know she created she's fostered it she can care of it when dirk's away she's saying really the one that takes care of it michelle what would you like to say oh i just think it's like this own it's become this incredible beast online you know it's got its own life now so before we really had to kind of move it along but now it's just developed into something really awesome and I'm pretty proud of it I'm proud of everybody in it so it's pretty cool yeah um, I mean I've met a lot of people through it uh, myself including you two <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> in fact i remember yeah, that's, that's true you know i've met i didn't really even think about that i've met a lot of interesting people through there too 
Yeah, I remember getting a message at like one in the morning from Crystal um, asking me about action figures or something. And I think that's the first time I ever talked to you. And that was. Yes. Yeah, it was. Several months I ago. was <laughs> scheming about action figures of Michelle and I at that time. And then yeah. lo and behold, she went ahead and got one for me, anyways, of my alter ego, Miss Destruction. <laughs> I don't know who did that. It was nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> it, may, it may or may not have been violated by the Hulk before it left. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of wondering I, what those heart pumps look on it I, you know I have, no control, I have no control over him he lords over the basement mocking the other action figures for their lack of a penis <laughs> <laughs> teabagging them it's terrible well, <laughs> you, can't blame him. you can't blame him for strutting his stuff <laughs> he is he is anatomically correct as all hell <laughs> It, you know what? You know what's funnier than actually? That's funnier than the finished product was having people watching me do it, because he actually, I actually made him while we were in the middle of playing Dungeons and Dragons, because I was bored. <laughs> Our friend Scott was, uh, he was storytelling, and uh, God bless Scott, I love him to death. He's a crappy storyteller, um, <laughs> and. I got bored, and there was some sculpted material and a Hulk sitting there, and I'm like, what if this Hulk had a penis? And <laughs> lo, about 20 minutes later, he had a penis, and it was sculpted on, and they're like, you're going to take that off, right? And I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, it's on there now. <laughs> I'm going to paint it. It's on there now. It's staying. You can't get rid of that. That's awesome. And I was like, I'm going to go paint it now. Uh, you guys keep going. <laughs> yeah, I still, I still have a deep that it is the time to come on tonight then anatomically. He is indeed fully anatomically correct. Um, you're cutting out again, sweetheart. <laughs> Sorry. That's yeah, okay. Is that okay now? It's a little better, yeah. Your signal's probably not very good where you are. No, it's not. It's all experimentation. This is the first time we've attempted anything as far as this goes over Skype, so it's actually a good learning experience for me. So, in preparation for all this stuff, uh, we read some comics, and we're going to get to that in just a minute, but I want to ask about Mayhem and Chaos, too, since uh, this is something that you guys have been doing together. Um, what gave you the idea to start doing that? Well... Oh, um, I wanted to branch out, do something I wanted Michelle involved too because she's my partner in crime. She might be thirty five hundred miles away, but she's still my partner in crime. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I wanted to have an additional place. You know, I come to know a lot of different art writers, etc. I wanted a different place to share their work because you see that I do a lot of that on Facebook. I'm not really sure why. I get pumped up about it because I really enjoy the indie comics. I've enjoyed talking to all of the people that I've come to know about their work. I like sharing it because I think it's important that people, excuse my French, you know, get off the dicks of Marvel and DC and start reading something else. And I think, you know, maybe it's helped a little bit with some of these people. Uh, Scott Markley gave us a shot, uh, shout out on uh, David Patterson's podcast the other night. And Markley does a comic called uh, Time for Hugs. It's a strip that he does online. I'm sure that you've seen it. Um, and that name's also going to come up a little bit later when we discuss another thing. Um, you know, I don't think that those two knew each other before Mayhem and Chaos. I know that you said who was. No, you cut out at the end, sweetie. What was your question? Yep. Have we lost you again? 
Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, <clears throat> give me just a second to reconnect with her, but how do you feel about doing the Mayhem and Chaos, Michelle? Um, I think it's an awesome just kind of mishmash of different artists, different projects going on. We always love to see independent artists and what they've got to offer, and it's a really good place for people to share that stuff. I mean, we are totally receptive to, to seeing all kinds of art, all kinds of writing, all kinds of projects. doesn't matter what it is, photography, sculpture even, painting, comics. It doesn't matter. If you're doing it, if you're out there creating it, we want to see it in our group. Cool, cool. Now, what, um, when did you get started reading comics? Oh, God. I are you asking, asking both of us? Well, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sure you were back yet, so I was just letting her go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I dropped out. Now I'm back. I have no idea where the conversation left off at. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, uh, was asking Michelle how she felt about doing Mayhem and Chaos, but then, um, yeah, like, uh, both of you, like, when did you start reading comics? Michelle, you were talking, so go ahead and go first if you'd like. Um, I got started really late in the game, actually. I never was into it as a kid. It's just something that I never got into until really late, um, late in my 20s, actually. And that's the first time I started really checking out what was out there. And I have, I'm really unversed in the big comic genres, you know, all the, the different big named comic companies. I, do, I don't know anything about them. Um, I've, I've really started from the, the you know, the independent um sectors and it's been really enlightening it's been really fun making friends with these people and um they're really cool people to know cool what about you crystal about the same story uh i grew up you know i live in michigan and i grew up up north comic shops were not a thing at all uh i didn't start until uh about five years ago when i moved closer to Detroit and it's kind of an interesting story how I got into it a couple of uh, well in a roundabout way anyways I knew somebody that owned a comic shop through somebody else and I decided to go in there because he was in a movie that I had seen so I wanted to go in there and say hey to him and check out the shop so that's how I got into it uh I go to comics and more in Madison Heights and the owner's name is Chris Brown and he has been just fantastic into with guiding me into the world of comics because I had no idea what I was looking for I knew that I didn't like superheroes I knew that I wanted to read something different and he turned me on to a wide variety of things and then I started talking to Dirk and then Dirk led me to about a hundred other people now literally I'm not even kidding and now I'm just picking up whatever I can, whenever I can, and just swallowing them whole pretty much. And going broke at the same time. So, you know, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all do that. <laughs> Actually, I've been reading comics. Um, oh, question. yeah, mentioning, um, getting back to when I started reading comics, uh, my first independent comic ever read was by um howie noel he was the author of the terra normal comics and i first read um one of his books and it's just been amazing since so i'm really excited about that yeah terra normal is is very awesome i just recently got into that myself and it's fantastic and he's a really nice guy too um Actually, with, for me, like, a comic book was actually the first thing I ever read as a kid. Um, I was, I learned to read when I was a, almost five. Uh, so very early. <laughs> and uh, my uncle was a big comic book collector, and he had huge amounts of uh, comic books around, and I was always looking at them, and there was a Superman comic book, and I really, really wanted to know what the hell was going on. But I couldn't figure it out, and so I just kind of learned. Like, I, I don't know exactly how, because my memory is sketchy on that stuff, but I just kind of figured it out. 
and everybody was like, oh, he can't read. And then I read the comic and they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, <laughs> believe it or not, yep, first thing I ever read was a comic book and I've never stopped since. Now, I read a lot of the big, I, I, I've over the over time read a lot of the big two. And I find that, like, even if you don't like superheroes, there's still stuff to that you can find in those contexts that'll work. Like, DC has Vertigo, which Vertigo has got some amazing stuff in it. And uh, just, you know, you don't necessarily have to um, read superhero books to read stuff from Marvel or DC. I mean, obviously, that's most of what they do. But there are some gems in there. Um, now, predominantly these days, if I'm reading anything that's new, it's probably an independent book. But, like, all of the old back issues, stuff like that, like, I probably go to the Half Price Bookstore once a week and buy a bunch of, like, they have comics for a quarter and I buy a bunch of quarter comics and just read through them voraciously because I don't read comics, I consume them. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to get to this half price bookstore because I, yeah, it's, what I've been spending lately has just been ridiculous because I want to read everything from everybody. I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, comics is comics is like a wonderful all inclusive sort of thing because like if you like theater or if you like um, you know drama or comedy or horror or any of that, you can pretty much find damn near any genre in a comic, and especially nowadays that comics has branched out so much from where it started. But I mean, there's something for everybody in comics, and it's such a beautiful medium too. Because I'm a huge reader of just regular books too, but and like you know, of course, a lot of that is to your imagination. But comics is such an awesome visual medium too. But uh, I'm always happy to see, um, like, I don't know, it seemed like when I was younger, there was, it was mostly just male comic book fans. I don't think I knew any, any female comic book fans until I was an adult. So I'm always happy to see female comic book fans and female comic book creators, too. And that's, that's so awesome. Like, anytime I find a, a good book from uh, one of my favorite comic authors, actually, is um, Gail Simone, who did... Um, Birds of Prey for DC for the longest time, and it's one of my all-time favorite series of books. I recommend it to anybody, even if you're not a superhero person. She's fantastic. All right, right on. I'll give it. A, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it has your seal, if it has your seal of appro- seal of approval, it must be all right. It's there. You go. There you go. That I've introduced it to, like I know uh, you guys know Victoria from being on the show, or the original Basement Babe. She's a big fan of uh, Birds of Prey too. So, and uh, also Strangers in Paradise, which is not a big two book, but um, it is definitely a very cool independent book. Uh, I think it's done through America's Best Comics, but there's been quite a few series of it, and it's pretty easy to find. So. Right on. Um, we did read a couple of comics uh, in preparation for this, and so I think Black of Heart was the first one that I read today. Now, you guys probably know more about the uh, people involved in this than I do because these were suggestions from you. So um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what's behind Black of Heart? Michelle? Oh, hi. <laughs> Stay with me. Okay, hi. Um, yeah, Black of Heart is by Chris Charlton, and he runs Assailant Comics, and you can find all of his offerings at assailantcomics.com. And um, I really was, I was just really scrolling through my newsfeed one day, and I saw this pop up that Black of Heart had won an award, an independent comic award, and I was like, okay, let me check this out. And it's really just drawn me into the series. Um, it's set in 1949, and it's a noir detective um, mystery, murder mysteries, following a ser- serial killer um, in Brooklyn. And um, just the, man, the feel of this comic is just, it's right on the money to what I look for in, in, in reading anything, any genre, any book comic anything that's it's right on the money with what I love to read and the artwork in this book it just it makes you it sets the tone completely it makes you feel like you're actually there you know it's just it's it's an amazing series and I I I I know that you guys liked it just as much as I did yeah I've only seen the oh totally so far but it looks pretty awesome Crystal what do you think about yeah I I uh Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. 
Yeah, when I was reading it, I uh, I ended up sending a message to Chris afterwards asking him about the art style in it, and he told me, you know, it was a combination of collage prints, paints, pencils, inks, and I told him it was kind of silly, but I told him it reminded, the whole thing reminded me of a magazine cut and paste death threat. <laughs> or something like that it had a very <laughs> I know that sounds crazy um it had a very creepy feel to it which I think that's what the aim was mm-hmm. yeah the whole thing was very the whole thing was very attractive I'm looking forward to reading more of it and picking it up at Gem City because that's where he's going to be at and yes Michelle I will be picking up your hard copy <laughs> mailing them to you <laughs> Well, I know for sure. <laughs> you better be. Remember, remember, I requested specifically from Chris Charlton that I want five hearts drawn on it all over the place when he signs. <laughs> I am all. I am all over it. I am all over it. <laughs> that's my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> Well, I know that we're going to be taking our recording equipment down to Gem City, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, set up some interviews with all these different creators. Because Gem City is an awesome convention for that. There's a lot of independent creators there, and I'm super. I excited. saw that. Yeah, and I'm also super looking forward to putting my foot nine miles up Dirk Manning's ass. <laughs> Oh, no, you're going to have to get in line because I am going to be there first with my steel chair in tow. And my only regret is is that Greg Novak isn't going to be there with my Spanish (laughs) announcer's table. But but Fringe is going to be there, my tag team partner. So I hope Dirk is expecting uh, the ass beating of a lifetime because that's what I'm going to be bringing. I want to borrow one of those steel chairs and crack that shellac on his hair (laughs) (laughs) i don't know if that can be done do you think the chair would break it's possible yeah he did uh, inform me that if i (laughs) attempted to do that that it would break the chair and also break (laughs) my hands but he does not realize yeah what what was that first (laughs) he does not realize that these fists are made (laughs) granite (laughs) yeah i really don't know why I don't know why he thinks he's going to win this match. I really don't. He's hopelessly outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is. And Man. I think I think I might be able to coerce Victor to come to the dark side. Man, I'm might. over I'm over here in California just trying to figure out how to priority mail him some pain. I I'm still trying <laughs> to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably have to take out a second mortgage like I did with your cookies. What size box yeah. do I need for yeah. this whoop ass that I need to send? <laughs> they ch- they charged an arm and a leg for her to send some cookies. So how much for a wedgie now? <laughs> oh, I know all about that. When I when I sent out your mask, it was something like ten or fifteen dollars or something like that just for that. And I was like, my I God. know, <laughs> I know. It's just. It's just highway robbery post office. Are you listening? It's highway robbery. <laughs> I'm actually used to it because I have to ship a lot of customs in that direction. And when it happens, I'm like, my God. Well, they have to pay for it, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible injustice. <laughs> it really is. In all seriousness, though, uh, Dirk has been an awesome friend to our show, and he's been on multiple times. And I actually, when I put up the thread about needing a co-host, he was cursing the fact that he was stuck at two conventions and couldn't come and do it himself. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought, oh my goodness, that was so nice of him. Yeah, no, he he, re- you know what? He really is a great, great guy. Um, you know, he took a lot of time out. Uh, different different tips on writing and you know has let me harass him endlessly without ever putting up a single fight about it he, he's a good guy I've seen him a couple of different times now and he always makes time to say hey Crystal how's it going you know what's up so yeah 
He's a good guy, but that doesn't abstain him from uh, me kicking his ass at Jump City. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's all right. He's, he's like, all right. I I always do that. <laughs> anytime, anytime someone's uh, singing his praises online, I'm, all, I'm always being a brat, and I say, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably so tired of that now. <laughs> He's probably tired of me making videos and mocking him. <laughs> <laughs> Although he was very excited about the last one for some reason. <laughs> that last one was pretty great. Well, hey, at least you didn't rip off your shirt and make poor Anthony D. Lee shit his pants. So at least you got that much going for you. I did rip off my shirt and I made the entire internet vomit. <laughs> not. Stop it. I still think that we should make a DVD collection of all those promo videos. Oh, oh for real. For Just real. putting that out. That's terrifying. I, I'm terrified that anyone's seen them, let alone more people. <laughs> <laughs> more people. More more shirt ripping 2K15. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as often, as, as often happens on the show, we strayed away from what we were talking about, uh, about the, the Black of Heart comic. Now, I read it... Um, a few times. <laughs> I read it a few times. Uh, what's up now? Obscura? Yeah, well, I was going to say about Black of Heart, I read it a few times earlier, and I really, the, about the artwork, I really love the artwork in it, and uh, actually kind of love the direction that the story went, and then the kind of a twist at the end of the first issue. I always enjoy that sort of crime horror stuff. Like, I watch a lot of true crime shows on TV, and I read a lot of crime novels, things like that, so that's definitely my thing. I don't, I, it's probably a good thing we did it for this show because I'm pretty sure that is, well, I mean, I know for a fact it's really not Dave's kind of thing at all. Um, he's definitely more towards the action oriented comics. Um, occasionally he enjoys the horror stuff, but not nearly as much as, as I do or as, as you two do as well. Um, but yeah, I've definitely enjoyed it and I definitely would like to get some more. Um, so I'll have to harass him at Gem City and, and buy some. Yeah. <laughs> Very good awesome now the other one that we did was uh obscura and this is actually the one that we read was volume three now i downloaded the the full um collected work oh, that wait a minute that uh he sent to us but i didn't actually get a chance to read through it so i only got a chance to read through volume three right i you know david had sent me uh the full works a few months ago and i just purchased uh, the three issues, and I know he has another project coming up soon. I'm not sure what our liberties are to discuss that, so I'm not going to go there. Um, gosh, you know what? And I cannot remember the name of the website right now either, where you can get them from. But you can get the three issues of Obscura for, I think I paid maybe $10 for all three of them. Um you know, they're short, they're short stories. Wh what was it about 10 short stories per issue? Roughly. I think so. Yeah. That really just smack you right in the face. It's horror. It's murder mysteries. It's a little bit of everything. It's definitely that. <laughs> now, the one that we did specifically was Volume 3. Um, there were, I think, five stories in Volume 3. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I think five stories. Um, now, I, since I haven't read any of the rest of them, um, is this sort of, uh, is Volume 3 representative of the of the rest of it? There are some tie-ins in between 1, 2, and 3. I don't want to give any spoilers because you haven't read them yet. Right. And I know he sent you the collective works. Um, there are some tie-ins. It does hop around a little bit. So it's one of those things that you're really going to have to read through at least twice to pick up on it maybe even three times because when I read through it the first time I didn't really quite pick up on things and then when I went back and read it again and again 
then I saw the tie-ins in between some of the stories. I'm sure that there is a lot that I'm still missing because, like you, I don't read comics. I devour them. Mm. It just... (laughs) Keep flipping (laughs) right through it. Uh, What are your thoughts, Michelle? Um, I was way into it. Uh, I like how um, they just kind of hit you. I mean, it's like a gut punch. Every single one was kind of a gut punch. I mean, I went from like being creeped out to being really sad. I mean, it runs the gamut of emotions of, um, just, uh, moods. It really runs the gamut of moods. You, you sit there and you're, you're, you finish one and you're upset and then you start the next one and you're like, Whoa, (laughs) you know, so really definitely a roller coaster ride for the read. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there there are four stories, by the way. I, I just pulled it back up. Um, four stories: um, Blue Pigs, Flicker Rate, Suckle My Child, and uh, Tales of the Tentacle. Um, they're very, very different stories. Like, <laughs> I would say that none of them are really similar to each other. Um, and I would even say they're each one is different is a sort of a different genre. Um, Blue Pigs is a uh, kind of a crime. Uh, well, not crime necessarily, but like a political assassination sort of a story. And um, Flicker 8 is an interesting sort of um, out there sci-fi story. Um, I don't even know what to say about Suckle My Child. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Tales of the Technical is kind of a, a funny sort of Cthulhu-y sort of story. Uh, do you, uh, Crystal, do you have a favorite story of this volume? I like the Blue Pigs one. The assassination I, story. Definitely. Yeah, I was definitely into the assassination story, but I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I really, uh, hello? I get in some of the, I'm sorry, I get into some of the conspiracy theory stuff and the wild ideas that people have behind it. And that's why I enjoy it. I don't take that kind of thing overly seriously, but that's why I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it's an interesting take on it. Um, I, I've watched a lot of documentaries about the Kennedy assassination, and um, a lot of different ones implicate uh, you know, other members of the government. Uh, it's very similar to the way this one does. Uh, Michelle, did you like this one as well? Uh, the Blue Pigs one? Yeah. Yeah, I really I love that kind of stuff. I'm a history buff. I'm a I'm a conspiracy theory buff. Well, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I like stories based on conspiracy theories. <laughs> so I I was into it, yeah. Sorry. Um <laughs> I took a drag of my vapor there and uh it was <laughs> uh, I I like things like that. I also like ones, um, I know there's uh, part of the genre of the um, political stuff is like alternate world sort of stuff. Like, um, you know, what if the Nazis won World, world War II or something like that? And uh, I like, I'm very interested in stories like that. And this sort of reminds me of of that sort of a thing. Um, it doesn't quite go into that category, but it, it makes me think of things like that. And I enjoy those sort of things. Now, Flicker Rate is, is definitely um, more of a sci-fi story. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know what to say it's cute because that kind of sounds trite, but it is kind of a cute story <laughs> in a way. Um, it's kind of like a flight of fancy uh, about the space program. Now, Michelle, I know that you're very much into the space program. What did you think about this story? That one made me cry. No. So, <laughs> I'm a big sap, but... Um... I really love the space program. Obviously, I'm, you know, if you are are my friend on Facebook, you probably noticed that every other post I put on there is about space or stars or the universe or something. And um, so this one really got my heart. I really loved that one. I have to say that that was my favorite of the entire volume. Yeah, I found it pretty fascinating, actually. Like, I like the idea of it being, uh, exploring the sort of science behind what, um, memory, how memory works in animals, and especially, like, the, the thing about the, the short memory of a goldfish, and I like the idea that their memories are vast, and, but that it just goes in, like, flicker sort of increments like that. I think it's fascinating. Crystal, what did you think of this one? 
Oh, um, actually, I'll be right back, okay? Go, go ahead. Oh, Crystal's leaving us. All right, well, <laughs> um, actually, Just one minute. Gone. What's that? Because I am absolutely freezing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Please. warn you about being in the cold. <laughs> don't. Don't make my crystal get frostbite, please. I caused none of this. <laughs> it's all your fault. I accept no blame. <laughs> blame Todd. That's my next mem. Blame Todd. Why not? Everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I was going to say, I enjoyed the artwork in this one, too. Um, I don't know who did the artwork for the individual stories, but I did enjoy this the artwork in this one quite a bit. Um, I thought the goldfish was very cute. And I also uh, enjoyed its spacesuit very much. <laughs> he was fitted out, dude. He it was, was so ready. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, his little spacesuit was, like, the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I know. That one scene, like, like there's there's a, a shot of him from the side getting ready to get on to the space shuttle, and he's all in his suit, and he's all proud. And I'm like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> I knew it was going to end badly. Though at that point, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I have to say the thing I kept thinking was, why does he need an enormous spaceship? Why can't they just shoot something much smaller? in the space for that one tiny fish <laughs> it's not well it really doesn't matter the cargo you have to have a big spaceship initially especially to get it off the ground just for all the fuel you need to fight gravity come on Todd think it through <laughs> I'm no expert on space most of my space knowledge is Star Trek related so <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm back. <laughs> All right, good. So, <laughs> did you have thoughts about Flicker Rate? Honestly, I will level with you guys completely. I didn't end up getting through uh, all rereading all of three again um, because somebody, uh, another artist that just friended me today, was chatting at me there the last minute while I was trying to get back through and read it. <laughs> I won't name names. <laughs> Whoever it is, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tag him in the post later and make <laughs> and make him uh, listen to the shame. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a pattern. I, I you know I was talking to Crystal. I found out that she doesn't listen to the show, and then I find out that she didn't read the material first too. <laughs> I feel like this is a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> it's listen listen you guys know how how distracted i get because yeah. i'll be you know i'm sorry i'm just i'm just a struggling child over here just Aww. i see shiny things and i go running in 50 directions <laughs> that's why we love you though come on now we love you for that don't coddle her <laughs> but she oh. failed don't coddle her. <laughs> yeah, no, don't coddle me. I promise hey. I will listen to the show more, which I still need a bearded beast of the basement shirt. I need to get one of those. Ah, well, no, no, I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can rock it quite as hard as Michelle does, but I still want one. You have to actually listen to the show to, to get one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for it. <laughs> I wear your face on you my body. I'm <laughs> gonna be one of those You've people who wears the band T-shirt. But they don't listen to the band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Are we done making fun of Crystal now? Never. I know. Damn. Get off my girl, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't have Dave here to mock, so I have to mock somebody, and I don't want to mock Michelle because she's too nice. Crystal, I can give shit. What? <laughs> where did you get the idea that i was nice i'm a jerk <laughs> so you say oh yeah because that was real believable <laughs> <laughs> damn it i'm tough <laughs> i calls him like i sees him <laughs> oh, 
that's what it is. It's 5dcomics.com. I'm pretty sure that's what David Brown's website is. I'm going to get on here and look real quick. Awesome. It Sorry. Is not, it is not dsnuts.com, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. It's terrifying. I, I personal. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, no? that's my that's my new website. Actually, I'm gonna start a new website just for Dave's hotel pictures. Please <laughs> just do the calendar for those. I'm gonna call it fancydave.com. <laughs> fancy <laughs> Dave. Dave is fancy. I I personally, you know what cracks me up is that I get blamed for this. But this time, he totally busted out of the bathroom in the hotel room, threw his mask on, and said, "Start taking pictures." <laughs> <laughs> we need to control. We need to continue the tradition. <laughs> the tradition continues. Yes. That man. That man can wrap a towel. I'm telling you right now. That was that was expert work. I have to say. Yes, but unfortunately, in that was- uh, the hotel room with him, uh, you have to know that uh, after, immediately after I was finished taking the pictures, he whipped off his mask, laughed at me, whipped off his towel, and then walked nude into the bathroom. So, <laughs> <laughs> no fucks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah, no none fucks given. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bet. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you tickety typing. Where's the where's the kitty cat tickety typing? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I'm trying to 5D comics, wasn't it? I know it it's something like that though. Dang it. Um it's Okay, day. anyways, sorry. <laughs> Now, uh, well, so I'm not going to ask you, Crystal, since apparently you don't read the comics, but, uh, Michelle, <laughs> what did you think of? I got busy with other things. I got hey, busy it, with other things that I couldn't be bothered <laughs> to read the material before I did the show. <laughs> uh, it was her reread, dude. Stop being so hard on my girl. What? Uh, I do what I want. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Michelle, what did you think about Suckle the Child, which is quite fucking disturbing, by the way? <laughs> um, just fucking wow. That's basically it. Um, <laughs> I know probably uh, when I go to sleep and then I start to dream, it will become a nightmare because of Suckle the Child. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm preparing myself for it right now. So try to steal my reserve to be able to go back to sleep. That was, well, yeah. <laughs> the interesting thing about that one is it's less of a comic sort of story and more of just like a piece of art and then a story that goes along with it, which is kind of very different for a comic, I think. And it's such a, oh, such a like <laughs> disturbing image in the first place, a beautifully done image, but very, ugh. and uh, I don't know. There's yeah, something that about the was word... one that was a gut shot for uh, sure when yeah. you read it. Yeah. There's something about the word suckle that I think <laughs> people find disturbing. Like I use it a lot because I think it's funnier than saying suck it. I'll be like, no suckle. But <laughs> like, I think it's, it, there's just something very visceral about that word. It's different than just saying suck. Like, Suckle just, it brings up weird sort of imagery, even though it's a very, like, it's a word associated with a very natural sort of, you know, you know, uh, motherly sort of thing. But, like, I don't know, there's just something about the word that's so much more descriptive and visceral than just, you know, using a a different word. Uh, Sorry. Um, I think that, I don't know, like, I had to read it twice because I didn't quite get the full impact of it the first time. Um, I don't know. It's very, it was very much the more pure horror uh, story of the book. And horror is definitely my thing for sure. So I, I enjoyed it, but I also was very disturbed by it. (laughs) And then the last story in the book is the tales of the tentacle 
uh, which I would say was the funniest story of the book. And uh, anything involving monkeys, I'm automatically down for. <laughs> because I do enjoy a monkey. Uh, what did you think about this one, Michelle? Hello? Oh, did I lose you guys? No, I uh, I'm still here. I lost her. All right. Did you do you well, remember this story? At any though? rate, I found the correct website. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's fifth dimension comics dot wordpress dot com. All right, so everybody go ahead and, and check that one out. Also, well, they also have a Facebook page. Um how did I uh yeah, they also have a Facebook page. Uh, that's just Fifth Dimension Comics. It says that you liked it. Where have you been at? <laughs> I, I like a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, if it has some sort of picture of something Cthulhu related, I just automatically like it. <laughs> that's it pretty much something... how I roll, too. If it says something <laughs> comics, I do the same thing. Like, well, comics, what? Click, like. <laughs> <laughs> Or if it has uh, curvy women, I, I also like that. <laughs> um, Michelle, we lost you there for a second, but um, uh, we were—I was going to ask you about the last story, the um, uh, tentacle story. Oh, oh, the the monkey, the monkey the story, monkey yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "I'm an ape, madam." Yeah, that was a pretty fun. It was funny at the same time as a bit twisted. Um, I, I, I really liked it. I really liked basically the whole volume all the way through. Um, definitely a standout since there was a monkey and he could talk yes. <laughs> and he could fire a gun. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> no, I like anything involving a monkey. So <laughs> I'm a simple creature. Easy to please. <laughs> <laughs> so okay i'm fairly easily entertained myself i think we all are <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the hats <laughs> <laughs> now i know you guys have both been um been buying a lot of comics or getting comics from a lot of the creators that you've um that you've met through the Facebook and through Mayhem and Chaos. Is there anything that's in the pipeline that you're really excited about getting and reading? Uh, yes, actually, um, a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to be receiving, let's see, I ordered the second Black of Heart from Chris and also one of those really awesome assailant coffee mugs. I know that's not reading material, but you know I love <laughs> my coffee and I drink it constantly. Um, and it goes hand in hand with my awful smoking habit, so bonus <laughs> there. But I'm also receiving two more books from Dan Noakes. I'm getting uh, The Pistoliers. That's a Western deal and then I'm also getting a book from him called The Paranormals and then he has more of Space Tales coming out soon he, uh, he's going to be working on issue 8 I'm really excited for that I have a, a huge stack of things that I haven't even read yet um, some of them are from Chris Otto uh, it's a collection of his comic strip called A Dog's Life that I still need to read. I have a book from Scott Markley that I still need to read. That's his first trade of Time for Hugs, that comic strip. Um, I'm going to be getting a special piece that I can't really fully talk about yet from Dan Doherty. I'm getting a commission from him as a gift for someone else. Uh, I'm excited for his Touching Evil issue 6 that should be coming out. I have no idea when. I saw a post with some of the artwork about it, and I was almost crapping my pants over that. Um, I know I'm forgetting something in there. Oh, yeah, Aaron Moores. I backed his uh, 
Kickstarter. So there will be that, too, at some point. I'm sure that there's other things. <laughs> what, what about, about you guys? <laughs> what about you, Michelle? Uh, well, um, Black of Heart is up to Volume 4. I believe Chris just released um, Volume 4 digitally, and he has the print editions available. So when Crystal picks up my bedecked, hearted Black of Heart, I will be reading that. And um, also, I, I also backed Aaron Moore's Kickstarter, so excited about that. Excited about getting my box of swag from Dirk Manning's Kickstarter. That's oh. got to be coming through soon. Me too. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think that's it for now. I need to really start trolling mayhem and chaos for some new materials. Oh, I backed, um, end of days by, I believe John Medeiros. And, um, oh, that's so great. that's going pretty well. You got to check it out. Um, yeah, I've been pimping end of days for a while now. <laughs> I, I hope that I haven't really even well. seen this. Really? What is it? What's end of days? Ah, it's hard to describe. Uh, I I post a lot of their updates. Um, check on our wall. You should probably at least be able to find one. Um, it's pretty interesting. It's like, um, I don't know. It's hard to describe. You just kind of have to take a look at it. <laughs> okay. I look at I mean, I am on it right now. Is it on your site or is it going to be on your page or in the group? Um, I don't, I haven't put it in the group. It's just going to be on our regular page. Okay. I just want to put it out there that whoever played Selma or Velma rather, and your, uh, comic con picture is really gorgeous. All right. That I'm is done. the incomparable Ivy Doom Kitty, one of my all time favorite cosplayers. She is very sweet. And I don't know what her sweater, I don't know if her sweater was cashmere, but it was extremely soft. And uh, I had to hold off Dave uh, with uh, threat of death so he did not try to jump on her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, 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 she's not going to smell the chloroform rag. Put it away. Put it away. <laughs> no, she was very, very sweet. Sure I found it. Day scorched earth. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, she's. I got, I um, if, you, if you like her, you should check her out on Facebook. It's uh, Ivy Doom Kitty. She does tons and tons of awesome cosplay, and we actually went to a panel uh, that she did about body positivity and cosplay that was fantastic. Um, she definitely is one of those people who crusades for like, uh, doesn't matter what your body type is, if you want to cosplay, you should still do it, and I'm a big firm believer in that. Although I will not be being uh, Fat Superman in tights anytime soon. <laughs> Damn it. I, see, now listen to you, you hypocrite. <laughs> no one wants to see that. No this one. end of these thing looks great. No one wants to see it. No one wants to see it. <laughs> no, I would do, I would cosplay. I thought about it a few times, actually. I've had, we've had a few discussions about it, but uh, we're usually so busy at cons that I just, it, it would be a hindrance, so I'd try to avoid it. I think you should. I think at some Both point I probably will. Maybe uh, maybe after I lose like three or four hundred pounds, maybe then. Uh. Oh my God. <laughs> I, listen, listen, I am not going to show up in full sexy Miss Destruction gear at Gem City Comic Con if you don't dress up. Uh, I I definitely don't see it happening at Gem City, but <laughs> maybe sometime. You down. need to. you need to at some point. I demand it. I will I will give it a shot at some point. I it is uh, it looks like a lot of fun, and I I have a lot of respect for the people who do it because it it can't be easy. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look easy, but I think I'm gonna. Uh, start some kind of a challenge in Mayhem and Chaos to get Todd to cosplay as Superman. <laughs> I want him yeah. to on the outside of your and everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it'll never happen. There's no amount of money in the world that would get me into tights. <laughs> Although, um, I don't know. Both of you guys I know are friends with, 
me and my personal page. Uh, last year, when Dave and I went to Cincinnati, we both did our version of cosplay, and he was Green Lantern, and I was Superman. So if you look on there now, of course, any, any of you guys who are not friends with me personally, you can suck it because you're not going to see it. But <laughs> oh, I'm right now. But you can uh, <laughs> check into that and see as far as I'm willing to go cosplay wise <laughs> at this point. But uh, Michelle, I wanted to give you a, a chance to talk about your poetry because it's been blowing up the interwebs. <laughs> especially. Hey. And special thanks to uh, our friend, uh, Friendzilla or J.R. Blanton for uh, taking the time to make a uh, an awesome fan page for, for Michelle's work. Um, I I love that guy. I haven't got a chance to meet him yet, but I did hear. Uh, isn't he going to be at Gem City? Wait a minute. Who now? Fringe. Fringe? Yes. I, I think so. I think we might actually be going together. Uh, we still haven't really quite worked that out because there is a problem that weekend. Um, but we might show up together. Oh, okay. I'm not sure yet. Well, either way, I really, I we might, really love we might him. Together. I'm hoping so because he's my tag team partner. So... <laughs> <laughs> But Michelle, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about it. like I I would not say I'm a poetry expert or anything, but I, I of course, um, you know, from reading my comments, I absolutely love it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate any readership there there's been. Um I've had my little fledgling Tumblr account for about three years now, and just now, just today, I got to eighty followers. And um, Fringe was so kind because he saw that post about my excitement and he said, why don't we get you a home here on Facebook? And man, he just went in and did it. And um, by the end of the day, I think I have like 54 likes on the poetry page. And that is phenomenal for me. I mean, it's not much as a drop in the bucket, maybe to these bigger name people. But um, to me, that is everything. And I adore and appreciate every single person who took the time to like that page for me. And um, you guys for getting it out. I know Crystal was promoting it everywhere. So I love you. I love you. I love you for that. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a pretty amazing week, actually. <laughs> um but just anywhere that I have the ability to share what I do is amazing. If just one person reads what I write and can take something away from it, then I will die a happy woman. I know that. Mm -hmm. I know you did uh, an AMA on your Tumblr last night and you've done one before. Um, <laughs> have you enjoyed the experience of uh, getting questions like that? Uh, yeah, you know, when you put a non anonymous um, questions on, you really get people um, asking you questions who might normally not ask you questions or, you know, might be too shy because then they're identified by their profile or whatever. So um, it's been a pretty enlightening experience because every question I answer, I've never really asked myself. So being able to go through the process of answering questions about what I want for the future of my writing, um, things like that is, has made me kind of do like a, a, a self inventory about really what I want to do. And so it's been pretty helpful actually. So what you're saying is we're definitely going to be eating that leather bound poetry book sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I, I really hope so. I mean, um, even if all I do is little tiny, you know, online company I, I really want something in my hands that I can tangibly say this is what I've been doing for so many years this is the madness and the the nights at four o'clock in the morning when you wake up and you have to write it down I, I want something just physically in front of me that I can say this is my life's work and even if it doesn't sell any copies at all I'll, I'll be happy <laughs> Now, what's the uh, address for your Tumblr so people can check it out? Um, it's Michelle Joy Gallagher, all one word, dot Tumblr, dot com. Um, that's where the bulk of my archives are. And I will be starting to um, also share any new material onto uh, my Facebook page as well. So um, it'll be available at both places. 
And the Facebook is uh, MJ Gallagher. Uh, it's facebook.com slash MJG Universe. Ah. <laughs> And Crystal, I know I don't. I didn't. I didn't uh, say anything about this, but I know you've been writing too. Is it something you want to talk about, or you're not ready yet? I'm not quite ready to get into that. At some point, I will, but now is too early. So we. But I appreciate you asking, and I'm really super proud. I I'm very proud of Michelle and her work that she does. It takes. I know it takes a lot of strength for you to be able to post a lot of that. I know a lot of it gets very deep and personal for you. And I just wanted to put that out there that I'm glad that, you know, Fringe helped to get you onto Facebook and it's already exploded. What did you say you were already at with what? Within just a couple of hours, 50 likes, right? Yeah, oh, we're over 50. I think we're at 54. Um, so to me, that, that kind of growth is just phenomenal and unheard of. You know, I'm I'm the quintessential hermit writer. I'm terrible at self-promotion. I just kind of plug away and hide in my corner. And <laughs> uh, Speaking from just my own experience, it gets easier. I have horrible, horrible social anxiety. And when we first started doing the show, it was agonizing for me to uh to try to talk to people or try to put it out there we go to conventions and like i'd go with a stack of business cards and i'd still have the same stack when we were done but i would say that over the last year and a half it's actually helped me mentally doing the show because like first of all it's a form of therapy just like writing is uh to get all that stuff out of your brain like even though our show is not serious by any stretch of the imagination it's still a weird form of therapy And writing is the same thing. Of course, I write too, but uh, no one gets to see that stuff. Um, (laughs) But it gets easier. Um, I find like now when we go to shows, I'm I'm whoring out to everybody that's anywhere near. Like, oh, I have a card. I'm gonna talk about my show. So, (laughs) (laughs) oh, I wanted to. I wanted to. That's fine. Sorry. Someone can go. That's how, that's how you branch out. That's how you've come to, that's how your show has come to be what it is now. And I would really like to see that same thing happen for Michelle with her writing and, you know, my future project. Actually, there's a couple of them slowly being worked on, uh, which Michelle and I will be back at some point. We were discussing, uh, a side project that we can't really talk about right now, but we will be back <laughs> at some point to pester you and promote the hell out of it when it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, minions. Stay tuned. <laughs> it could be very daunting. Uh, I like personally, I've been writing since I was probably 12 and just, now am I to the point where I'd be comfortable letting things out there? And a few people have seen things, but yeah, you know, I do plan on hope. My goal is within the next year to actually get uh, get a a four to five issue comic series printed. So hopefully, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, putting putting things out there is not easy. Um, it it is very um, frightening. I I told. I, I think I told um, one of the Anons yesterday on my questions, they asked um, how it feels to post something. And I, I get butterflies every time. I, I equate it to um, being naked in front of someone for the first time and not knowing if they're going to reject you or say you're ugly or, you know, whatever. Um, so it is very hard. And, and thank you so much, Crystal, for your support. Always very supportive. And, and you, Todd, for your support. You, you guys have really kept me going. Well, I I think it's important to support those that uh, that you're friends with and that you care about. But not only that, I think it's important to support people who have real talent, and it's definitely you definitely fall in that category for sure. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> no blushing kitties on here. It's all it's all audio. <laughs> 
I'm blushing on a podcast. Uh, what, what was that? A uh, <laughs> couple of podcasts ago, blushing kitties and titties. <laughs> yeah, blushing kitties and titties. That's my new mantra. Like every time I get upset, I um, you know, I'm a, I keep being afraid that my kid's gonna start saying it because I do it in traffic now. <laughs> <laughs> Like a road rage takes me. You, you know what? We we need a an equivalent for dicks. Like we need to come up with an equivalent for dicks, like for our mantra, you know? <laughs> Blushing work, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> because it sounds like VD. <laughs> you need to get that checked out. <laughs> Well, it is directly because of that that Blushing Kitty is uh, my newest vagina euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, I knew if we talked long enough that someone would mention being naked, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, do you guys mind if I talk about uh, that thing? Whose thing? <laughs> As long as we're not talking about Todd. we're good. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just Thank real quick, know. I just wanted to say uh thank you to everyone that was super supportive today of my streak of madness with making indie undies. Um <laughs> That thread ended up, no kidding, had 110 comments from oh various people. Yeah, it got <laughs> insane. Um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dan Noakes, Scott Markley, and Chris Otto for letting me use their <laughs> images, even though I didn't ask first. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of happened. So I have, I now have underwear with screen printed images, uh, iron on patches. For those, Michelle, I will be mailing out your pair with extra love and care probably after I get back home. Uh, probably Monday. I know you're excited. Um, I, you know, I had a lot of support about it. You know, a couple of people said, you know, hey, you should do it for this comic or that comic and try to sell them. You know, that's not something that I could really see happening, but I just wanted to say that I appreciated the support of everyone that offered it and got in on the joke, especially uh, Anthony D. Lee with his suggestions. Uh, they're not really on air appropriate, although this show hasn't been appropriate at all. He said, uh, I should make a uh, blushing, uh, we won't say. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Crystal doesn't listen to the show because she thinks there's something that's not appropriate for the show. Oh my god! What did he say? What did he say? He said, "Hello, Clitty." <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I know personally, it has been my dream to have our logo displayed on a girl's ass. So <laughs> that that I don't know the why basement, even... that bearded beast of the basement logo would look really good on someone's butt. <laughs> Give me a couple of days, Todd. Give me a couple of days. <laughs> then you could order the t-shirt, and then you could have panties and a matching t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but then you would definitely oh have to God. make some for Michelle because she's already got the t-shirt. So. <laughs> Absolutely right. Make. We'll be making it. And then we'll, uh, I'll have to find some iron-on transfers and make some boxer shorts and uh, and put your face on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to send you the best image ever. You can have Michelle on. You can have a. Uh, it'll be Michelle and I. Yes, and yeah. considering the size of my we'll ass, have, there'll be we'll life-size have pictures. There are masks. <laughs> Considering the size of my ass, there'll be life-size pictures, so. <laughs> oh, I love I love everything about this plan. <laughs> now, before I forget about it, Michelle said a uh, article earlier that I thought was absolutely hilarious, and I thought I'd take a chance to talk about that. Um, Crystal, I don't know if you actually saw this. I think this is the time that you were napping during the chat session, but... Uh, there's a story, I think it's out of Japan, 
or China. I can't. Oh, it's China. Okay, there's a story out of China where a man's girlfriend and ex-girlfriend both jumped off a bridge into a river at the same time to see who would, which one uh, he would save. This is an oh, insane man. story. <laughs> Michelle, do you want to talk? About- <laughs> okay, man, I would have just left both bitches in the water and just been like. <laughs> That is some crazy shit. Okay, I'm sorry. But the, for to have the current girlfriend like fall into that shit, man, both of them would have been. I would have gotten the taxi, gone to a bar, had a whiskey, gone home, gone to sleep. <laughs> Bye. Well, apparently, according to the story, what they said was that he had been dating the one girl, and then they had broken up, and he started dating the other girl, and then the original girl was very obsessive and kept like pestering him and all that. And then I was pestering the other girl and it, somehow it got to the, where they were all standing on a bridge, like trying to talk things out. And the ex-girlfriend jumped in so that he would save her. And then the current girlfriend was like, well, fuck that. And then jumped in too, to see which one that he would save. And he did save the current girlfriend. And then what I thought was the funniest part of the story is that he got her out of the water. And instead of going back in and getting the other one, he said, fuck it, called his brother and said, you come get this bitch. And <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's the best. So part I'm assuming he hates his brother. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, oh, brother, this that's bitch is crazy. That's what... Would you like some of my crazy sloppy seconds? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's real sloppy coming out of that river right now, too. She's so uh... sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping she can stay afloat oh. long enough for the guy to actually get there. <laughs> he, he doesn't have a fuck to give about that. You know he didn't show up. Or did he? I don't know. It didn't say. I'm like Michelle, though. I'd probably be like, they jump in. And I'd be like, well, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did show up. They had a picture. They had a picture of him walking next to the, the ex that was all covered. She was all covered in mud, and he was walking her out. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh man it was a fantastic story wow. the next time Dave and I do a wow. show I'm going to bring wow. it back up because I want to see his take on it I'm sure he will enjoy the fuck out of it uh, guys, but... one of you guys has to send me the link to the story so I can check it out too it's in the chat thread where we were talking earlier still so you can check it out that's going to be hours ago <laughs> just reset it <laughs> I will, I will know reset. that there's like you know, at least 500 comments I'm going to have to back backpedal through to find it. You're making hella you just resend each other, and this is insane. It's going to be, like, hella typing typing kitties and blushing kitties and happy kitties and heart kitties and cake kitties. <laughs> I, I personally like the angry kitty very much. <laughs> It's stomping its foot and looking very pissed off. <laughs> I don't really like that drooling one, though. That one just looks like it's, you know, hawking a loogie and it's going to suck it back up into its mouth. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Now, um, I have to mention this because I was reading it earlier and uh, I really enjoyed the hell of it. And I know that he's actually going to be at um, Gem City, but Eric Adams who I met, um, I've actually met him once or twice before, but I actually talked to him and met him in uh, Lexington. We were there, did this amazingly awesome book called Rumspringa that's uh, an Amish punk comic, which I <laughs> was not aware ever existed before, which apparently it, it's a new sort of genre that he's come up with. But um, you guys may also know him from doing uh, Lackluster World, which is a really awesome comic, and he's actually doing a um, Kickstarter for it right now, I believe. But, uh, Crystal, since you're going to be at Gem City, you definitely need to pick up a copy of Rump Springer because it's freaking awesome. Uh, that sounds like something I can definitely get into just from that very short description. It is absolutely I'm a, hilarious. I'm, I'm about it already. Amish punk. I'm, I'm all over it. Let's do this. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I also recommend Lackluster World, too, uh, which is his other book, uh, his main book that he does. It's a uh, very, very cool, like, kind of satirical black and white book that's very excellent. And I hope that uh, I'll get to get him on the show and uh, and be able to uh, talk to him about his stuff. 
That would be awesome. I'm trying to stretch it out because I lost Michelle and I'm trying to get her back. Yeah, I don't know if I'm oh. able to get her back or not. Oh, uh, nope. <laughs> All right, I'll try one more time. But um, now I really appreciate you guys coming on and doing the show um, since Dave couldn't be here. And hey, thank you for having us. I know it's been completely off the rails, but I really appreciate it a lot. It's a new experience for me, and I know it is for her too. And it's given us a chance to, you know, pimp our work, so to speak, and uh, the people that we know. Yeah, well, pimping ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't easy being gangster. <laughs> Michelle, I know we lost. Your, I know we lost you for a second, but we were talking about. I was talking about Eric Adams' awesome new book called Rumspringa, uh, about uh, Amish punk, <laughs> which is hilarious, and I think you would get a kick out of it too. So perhaps either Crystal or myself could pick up a copy for you at Gem City and mail it out there. Do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want five hearts on that one too, though. <laughs> well, I will talk to Eric Adams, and we'll see what we could do. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, like I was telling Crystal, I really appreciate you guys being on the show and uh, uh, being just being awesome. I talk to you guys a lot on Facebook, and, and uh, you guys have been big proponents of the show, even though Crystal doesn't listen. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate Get you guys this. pimping us out to other uh, to all of your friends. We've we've I've actually met quite a few people through Mayhem and Chaos, and through just uh, you guys being awesome and and being. Uh, "Quote unquote fans," uh, <laughs> but more than listen than... here. All right, <laughs> just because I promote it doesn't mean I'm always into it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Listen, all right. I I love what you guys are about, and I love what you do, and the posts that you make, and everything else. And I will be a better fan, but you know. My attention span is short. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, <laughs> lies that turn into bitter orange wax in my ears, Crystal. <laughs> you guys are. Are we going to throw down a jump or what? Because that's what this is sounding like where it's going. <laughs> I'm just saying, where's the love? <laughs> there is no love and there is no fucks to be had here. I'm sorry, they're gone. That's okay. <laughs> Dave doesn't listen to the show either. <laughs> I know. Awesome. But we're... You guys have to you guys have to drag a cardboard cut out of me around M City. <laughs> I, I, so I can be there in spirit Michelle, and cardboard. Michelle, I am actually making a cardboard stand up of you. I hope you know this. <laughs> I knew it. Oh my god. It'll be right there at Dirk's table too, and I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna have it looking at him, just all sinister, like the entire time. I'm not allowed to move it. I feel we'll have to have a bodyguard assigned to it because I feel like Victor Dandridge will be putting his hands all over it as he is to do. <laughs> <laughs> and as I previously stated in my promo, I will I will kick Victor Dandridge's ass if he's be putting hands on any ladies on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> They are attractive hands. You can't <laughs> deny that. <laughs> uh, on this show, no one's pretty but me, damn it. <laughs> you can be the pretty princess. It'll be all right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the prettiest princess of them all, damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a terrible cough here at the end, but we're um, at the hour and 15 minute mark. So we're going to be having to wrap it up here soon. I've lost Michelle one more time, but I want to make sure we get her back for the end. <laughs> this has been an interesting experiment in, in uh, technology for someone who is a horrible, horrible Skype person, obviously, as I am. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, no, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, you know, honestly, I've been kind of thinking about doing one myself or potentially doing something on YouTube. I I haven't really quite gotten that thought fully formed yet, though. 
I definitely recommend it to anyone who feels like they have something that they want to say because it is a I've had an absolute blast doing it and uh, it's broadened my horizons in Dave too. And it got uh, the chance to introduce us to just so many awesome people and, you know, especially writers and artists and um, just like making friends and stuff. It's just, it's been amazing because the most amazing thing about it, and I have to say this is like credit to Dirk and, and a lot of the other writers and artists is that when we go to conventions and we set up next to these writers and artists that are producing this amazing stuff, they don't treat us like fans or they don't treat us like just random people there. They actually treat us like contemporaries. And that's pretty amazing considering we're basically doing dick and fart jokes every week. So <laughs> that's pretty damn awesome. And so I, I really appreciate that. And I'm, I'm a better person for having done the show. I have to say that. That's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really inspiring to hear. And I'm happy that it has done as much for you as it has. Yeah, Absolutely. I definitely recommend it. And, uh, you know, judging from uh, your, uh, you know, your groups and your Facebook, you certainly have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Fresh, fresh rants and no pants with Crystal O'Rourke. It's going to be a new segment. <laughs> pants are for squares, man. <laughs> hey, like, hey, you know what? I'm, uh, I'm team no pants, no pants and no fucks. <laughs> Now, do you have? <laughs> at least that's my thing with. At least that's my thing with Drew. Anyways, <laughs> do you have anything that you want before we finish up? No, I got those comics from Michael Carr, and I still haven't read them yet, and I feel terrible about it. I think he didn't. He say he was going to re-release those. The, uh, you know, the four pack of comics for thirteen bucks. I think so. Yeah, I think I did see that. Yeah, so there's that, which I still haven't done. Um, oh, uh, here's something. Uh, J.R. Blanton, uh, make sure you guys head out, get out and like the J.R. Blanton page. He has stuff that's going to be coming up soon. His comic, Light Earth, which he has been sending me little bits and pieces here and there through... Uh, private messenger about and i can promise you i will be the first person in line for this book when it comes out because it is going to be phenomenal it is fantasy set it's going to be beautiful and i think dave might get into it i you know it's the fantasy world kind of thing Absolutely. he'll get into it Definitely. Um, yeah it's not necessarily my genre but uh, the artwork has been beautiful that i've seen so far so I, i'm definitely uh, yeah. supporting that he has, yeah he's been, he's had several different artists in on that um i think it's going to be a really beautiful work of art by the time it's finished i, I agree i'm i'm really excited about light earth really excited it's going to be great Michelle, do you have anything that you want to plug before we go? <laughs> Let me all get out my list. No, um, <laughs> um, basic, yeah, Light Earth for sure. Be looking for Light Earth and um, just back those Kickstarters. You see someone that, that, that needs some promotion, just get in there, promote them, back them. Um, everybody needs a little little push absolutely so um definitely but he... and all you guys should check out mayhem and chaos group uh join up and meet uh, lots of awesome artists and writers and just awesome people in general and uh if you're a dirk manning fan check out the friends of dirk manning group uh and uh, hey what the hell check out the basement fodder nation too <laughs> if you want to <laughs> if you want to see how bad my taste in music is um <laughs> yeah yeah, we're going to have to discuss that meatloaf preference at Gem Study. Yeah, you know what? Get, out, <laughs> get off my dick about meatloaf because uh, <laughs> meatloaf is awesome. So kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, after we get wrapped up here, it's about time for uh, my uh, weekly segment of DJ Smackdown on Todd of Basement Fodder. Uh -huh. <laughs> blowing up your page with all kinds of hair metal links tonight i think <laughs> this will not shock me 
<laughs> as well it shouldn't. <laughs> so everybody check out Basement Fodder on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com slash Basement Fodder and on Twitter at, at Basement Fodder. And I don't know what the Tumblr is, but I have a link to it up on the site. So uh, check that out too. And if you're looking for uh, awesome Basement Fodder t-shirts as modeled by the one and only Michelle, uh, it is at basementfodder.spreadshirt.com and uh, reasonable prices. And hopefully uh, here soon we'll be doing some different t-shirt designs too. But Go ahead and order one of those, and then you'll be cool like Michelle. <laughs> oh, so cool, Everybody baby. needs to be as cool as Michelle. Be no. one of the cool kids. Uh, and before this devolves <laughs> into the uh, Michelle Loves Crystal show, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. <laughs> I've really enjoyed having you two girls on. I appreciate it. Uh, mayhem and chaos for life. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. From the basement. Aww. <laughs> from the basement this week. <laughs> I'm Todd, she's Michelle, and she's Crystal. And until next time, 